Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I want to start out by reminding you the Flare Naming Service, who is one of my new sponsors. They've got over 2,000 domains minted now, and they're going to be starting a website builder on here, so when you get domains, you're able to go and, uh, and create an actual website, but it's also like a payment pointer. Um, so. The link to that is in the very top of the description of this video. I um, wanted to show you this. This is um, central banks from a central in 2000, October 2008, at the height of the financial crisis, central banks from across the Western world were involved in the manipulation of key interest rates that was reportedly covered up. Are you surprised? That's from the BBC. I'm not surprised at all. In fact, that's something I would expect. We, and then <laughs> the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel is here to uh, give us a little reminder. Uh, Gary, are you there? He's, uh, the official cool guy has gotten a lot more sophisticated with his graphics as we've progressed. <laughs> now, Egreg Crypto has made me laugh today He's got this one right here, which is a, a um, target one, 85 cent to a dollar, target two, five dollars and 50 cents, target three, six dollars and 40 cents, okay? And um, he, he says, stay steady, digital asset builder says, we're the good guys. And the good guys all will, the good guys always win at the end. Now, this is the one that made me laugh though. XRP Gaussian channel on ABC. Three dollars and thirty cents, or two hundred and fifty dollars. That's like, um, it's like a penny or ten thousand dollars. <laughs> this one, I got a kick out of this this morning. So I said, I need a chart on the uh, Hinman email release Gaussian channel. Could XRP jump the channel? <laughs> These some of the, sometimes the chart stuff and the terms make me laugh, and I think sometimes just for fun he makes up some of the charting terms. Now, I was reminded of, the, with these Hinman emails coming out soon, it reminds me of the, um, the movie uh, Gladiator, one of the best movies. Um, when he was about to go into battle, he says, at my signal, unleash hell. Because it feels like when these emails come out, hell's going to be unleashed on, uh, and the sleuths are going to go nuts with it. And I ran across this, this is from Brad Garlinghouse a while back where he was addressing the Hinman documents. Listen to this. Characterized the SEC has built a reputation that it's deserved as being a bully. You know, many, many well, players that the SEC has gone after, they simply have to fold their cards. I mean, Ripple will spend well over $100 million defending ourselves in a case that we have tried to move forward as quickly as we can, and the SEC has gone as slowly as they can. You know, I, I mean, another example I think is pretty profound. Uh, there's a kind of infamous speech that Bill Hinman, the director of corporate finance in the SEC, gave in June of 2018 saying, ETH is not a security. And uh, the judge, five times in the last 18 months, the judge in our case, she has ordered the SEC to turn over the notes in that case five times. We still don't have those notes. And I look at that as like, the SEC, it is a government agency. The government works for the people. The judge is ordering the SEC to turn these notes over, and they won't do it, and they keep coming up with new reasons why. So much so that the judge, in her most recent ruling, said the SEC is being hypocritical, and I will quote, saying, not following a faithful allegiance to the law. These are damning words for an agency whose mission is stated as to protect investors. In the case of the XRP, excuse me, the Ripple lawsuit, they destroyed $15 billion of value in the XRP market when they filed the lawsuit. That was not protecting investors. I, I, I found, I wanted to, you know, as, as these emails come close to being released, I wanted to show you, because I went back and looked, I wanted to show you some more profound moments where people are talking about all of this. Listen to this. This is Joseph Grunfest right here. He's one of the most respected ex-commissioners at the SEC ever. First. 
let's understand that this is a speech. Speeches do not have the force of law, whether they're speeches by presidents or by division directors of the SEC. Decisions as to whether Bitcoin and Ether are or are not securities are, as a practical matter, going to be made by the federal courts if and when the appropriate litigation actually arises. Now, the logic in the speech may be persuasive to the court, or it may not be persuasive, but still, it's just a speech, and that logic will probably have to be articulated in a brief filed with the court, but it'll have no precedential effect. Again, unless the SEC takes formal rulemaking action, speeches and other pronouncements by the SEC do not have the force of law. Second, and perhaps most intriguing, Division Director Hinman's analysis depends upon his understanding of the state of facts regarding Bitcoin and Ether as of June 2018. What was his understanding of the state of facts? We don't know. Nothing in the speech has the Division Director explain what it is about Bitcoin or Ether that leads him to the conclusion that it's sufficiently decentralized. That's quite curious, because typically when the SEC adopts a rule or regulation, or when a court issues an opinion, there are findings of fact. The court will say, I find the following facts to be true, and based on those facts, I apply the law and I reach the following conclusion. When the SEC adopts a rule or regulation, it will typically say, we had hearings, we looked at a record, these are the facts that we find, and because of these facts, we're going to adopt the following rule. Well, here we have the conclusion that Bitcoin is decentralized. We have the conclusion that Ether is decentralized. We don't know the facts upon which the division director is relying. Exactamundo. And this is one of the classics. This is John Deaton. I'll never forget this clip. It's one of the most watched clips around this stuff. Watch. Is did you know that 63 emails went out with that draft speech that gave Ether a free pass? Do you know who was the only commissioner to get a, a draft version mm. of it? Who's that? Jay Clayton. Did you know Crypto Mom herself, Hester Purse, never saw it? How do you draft? Why, this? why would Clayton even be involved in that, that draft? Why, why would he even... He gave input. He's the only commissioner. Bill Hinman was deposed. Ripple was successful in getting him deposed. Of course, they redact everything yeah. to the public. And uh, I have it here. If you want to see it, they uh, the lawyers ask him, did you ever uh, represent... How much uh, is redacted? Ethereum. 90%. Let me, can I see? This, is, this goes to... Pat, you were telling a story a couple weeks back about... You now, were, this is... You were at Harvard, and you, you said that there was a guy... Was having trouble. He said, just find a congressman, pay him a half a million dollars. That was it. He's going through an election, and he'll help you put up a law to hurt them. This is it? Yeah. Now, in action. He's asked questions like, have you ever worked for Ethereum Foundation? Look at the answers. Look at the freaking, look at the redactions. All right, and this isn't the whole, this isn't look the whole. Look at this. This isn't the whole lawsuit. Dude, are you kidding me? Right? This is insane. Now, 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 why would they redact, Pat, if he's asked a question have you ever had clients that are part of the Ethereum Foundation? If I represent you and your business, yeah. I can't talk about what we talk about. So is this public someone, record? No, it was an exhibit that's that's public so we record. Can we show, show this? Or oh, yeah, yes, you can show it. So, like... Absolutely. So, I don't know if people can see this, but and it's this pages is... pages of that. This is an entire page of every single word on the page redacted, and there's... There's... There's pages of it. This is your this is your transparent Securities Exchange Commission. Holy moly. Holy moly's right. Now this is an interesting take right here. This guy is um this is uh, a crypto channel right here. Coin I think it's Coin Bureau. I put a link to it right here at the bottom. Listen to what his theory is. Some also believe that the SEC was in cahoots with Ethereum's biggest backers to protect ETH and attack its biggest competitors, which includes XRP. However, I don't believe this conspiracy is true. This is because there's an even bigger conspiracy that's- By the way, he's about to tell you his thoughts, but I, I think it could be both. I mean, I, I, if, 
if you look, if you see what he's about to see, look, look what, okay, so he basically just said that he doesn't believe that it would be them joining with Ethereum's, uh, with Ethereum's uh, people to, uh, he said that he doesn't believe the conspiracy, what he's calling a conspiracy, that the SEC got with the Ethereum people and attacked uh, XRP. And then he goes on to give his logic, but I want you to think about something while he's telling you what he's telling you. Because he's basically gonna say that XRP was a major competitor to, to stable coins. Who got the money, Graham deal? What does USDC run on as you watch this? Brought to light since the start of the year. In case you haven't noticed, US regulators have been cracking down on crypto companies and projects that compete with the Fed's upcoming FedNow payment system, basically a CBDC prototype. If you've watched any of our recent videos about the ongoing crypto crackdown, you'll know that US regulators are targeting banks with 24-7 payment networks. You'll also know that US regulators are currently scrutinizing stablecoin issuers. Now, this makes sense considering stablecoins are digital dollars. And now consider this. The biggest competitor to stablecoins was, or rather is, XRP. This was mentioned by Avalanche founder Emin Gunsira, and I'll never forget it. I'll also never forget the zero fee international transaction feature introduced by Coinbase in 2019, which leveraged, you guessed it, XRP and USDC. Put simply, it appears that XRP was seen as the primary competitor to the payment systems being set up by central banks around the world. It was also seen as the primary competitor to stablecoins, some of whom have been explicit about their intentions to become CBDCs. This could be why XRP was targeted. We'll find out if either of these conspiracies are true when the Hinman documents are made public. Yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to find out what's right. Now, Digital Currency Group missed a $630 million Genesis debt payment. Uh-oh. And then Charles Gasparian says, can't tell if this is real or just wishful thinking, but speculation is again. Charles, you should know you're not allowed to speculate. You can't speculate on the Internet. You're not allowed to do that. I hope it's not wild speculation because you can really get in trouble for that. Speculation is again heating up that Gensler will leave the SEC to run for office, possibly for the seat of Senator Cardin, who announced he's retiring in 2024. Then we've got this. Coinbase has come out with a new TV commercial that they're going to be, um, says this week, D.C. will see a new, it's in D.C. they're going to run this commercial. Watch. <laughs> Let's see, how do, how do I start this? I'll just do it and tell you when to stop. Three, two, one. The naive view of crypto is that this is some speculative asset that people are trading and they're going to lose their shirts. That's missing the forest through the trees. Fundamentally, crypto is not a financial product. It's, it's a technology that can update all kinds of financial products. It can improve settlement times. It can make it cheaper to send money to your family overseas in another country. It can be a new way for artists to get paid. Cryptocurrency Regardless of what you think about it, it's not going anywhere. It can't be uninvented. Most of the world is embracing this technology now to update their financial system. And what I fear is that we're gonna be sitting here in five or 10 years, and we're gonna come back to crypto and think about it like we did with 5G or semiconductors and say, wow, now it's a matter of national security that we get it brought back on shore. We need security, to see what the potential of it is and where it goes. And we do that, we need a clear rule book in the United States. What does that say? It's time to update the system. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that XRP is the update to the system.